your forehand looking more continuous. Yeah, and I feel so, it's easier to put a spin on this. Yeah, one. like you remember before, the first time I saw you, you were like in here and you're getting uh -huh. stuck back here, and now you're a little bit more flowing. Sarah, in today's video, I would like to do Spanish footwork drills. Some of these drills I learned from Emilio Sanchez. You know Emilio Sanchez? Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of the Spanish coaches have the best drills. Did you do a lot of um, like hand feeding and footwork drills when you were playing in juniors in Spain? Oof, a lot of hand feeding. A lot of hand feeding? And a little fitness, you know. A lot of fitness, right? Fitness, yes, fitness, like footwork. Footwork. Good. And one more time. You know, like I grew up in Germany and when somebody from those northern European countries go to Spain to play like satellites or futures, they get destroyed by the Spanish players because the Spanish players are so good at playing on clay. Well, first of all, you guys can play on clay like the whole year. That's yeah. number one. But also like the clay is a little bit harder, I feel. So it's the ball different. bounce a little bit higher mm -hmm. and the spin is super effective. True. Where the clay, like in Northern Europe, is a little bit softer, like more, it feels like it's more muddy in a way, and the ball doesn't bounce as high, it's more suited for flat, flat ball strikers. But in Spain, man, it's so hard. I went one time as a preparation for the German um, league, I went one time to play satellite in Spain, and I got destroyed. No really? chance. Well, also, I want to say, like, it was in April, and it was the first time I played outside in six months, but yeah, it's. It's normal for like players who live in a northern European right. countries to go to Spain and get absolutely destroyed. It's nice. Because the Spanish I can and you have clay courts everywhere. It's clay, yeah? Clay but you guys everywhere. get more hard courts now too though. Now we're getting a lot of hard courts. Well, every city has clay. Clay. Of but course, not hard through. Red clay, of course. Yeah. But remember back in the day, like Spanish players only knew how to play on clay. Right. And they would even skip Wimbledon, they didn't want to go to Wimbledon. But now I feel like the Spanish players are all court players. They play on hard court, they play on everything. I mean, you have Carlitos it's, as an example, so it's a really... Not only him, but like, court. what about Carreno Busta? Uh -huh. And what about Batista Agut? Like, all these guys sure. are really good hard court players as well. True. So what, why is that? You, you think it's I think just... it's mental. Do you think it's more the fact that, like, um, the ATP game is more uniform now, where everybody kind of plays the same? Or do you think it's the fact that in Spain, that they have more hard courts now? Is that what it is, or...? I think we always had hard courts. You always had hard courts. Yeah, I think it's a combination of now they train like every surface. They train every surface. Yeah. But yeah. I also think like a, an advantage of the Spanish game is the mentality. They all have of the course. winner fighting mentality. Of course. They're applying it that to every surface. Well, that's true. That's they don't true. Give up. Bautista, that's true. It's like he doesn't give that's up. That's true. Why is that? Try to explain it to me. Like the Spanish players always have tons of intensity positive body no. language, True. like they fight for every point. I don't recall seeing one Spanish player who was like a um, moody player who will you know, kind of tank games or tank points or t even tank matches or throw their racket. All the Spanish players are like the hardworking type player, the grinders, the positive attitude, moving their feet. That's what makes them so tough to play. But why is that? It's just, um, is that the way you guys get brought up on the tennis court? I mean, I think it's in general how coaches are trained there because when you're little and you go to play, well, the parents too, you go to play and you do 100% on the court. If not, you don't go. Is that They're right? They're not going to pay for you to be lazy and coaches are not going to have you. You're, they don't babysit you. Yeah. Even when you're a kid. So maybe it's a little bit cultural too, right? I think. Yeah. I That's think. very interesting. And you go practice on time. You on time? Another thing. Yeah. If you're late, what happens? I mean, you run laps. Is that right? You know, here, uh, when you coach, sometimes they come Do you know the like, story where sorry. David Ferrer's coach, I forget his name, I wish I knew his name, but when David Ferrer would do something wrong, maybe show up late, the coach would lock him in the ballroom. It was like a closet they kept it. the balls in, and he would leave him in that room for it. a few hours. No, I believe it. They would <laughs> yeah. do that. One That's time I remember myself being late and run 100 laps. 100 laps for being late. With my two friends. Because we were, you know, hanging around. Yeah. Catches. That builds a lot of character. Yeah. And, dis never laid and discipline that. and respect for the respect tennis court. Respect for the coach too. Respect for the, time. respect for the coach, but also respect for the game. Yeah. 
you know? Because ultimately, like, when you throw your racket, when you tank a match, this disrespect to the game of tennis. You know what I'm saying? Okay, Sarah, we're going to do some Spanish-style drills, and we're going to do the V and X drills. Are you familiar with those? Yes. Okay, so we start off with the forehand V. Basically, you get one forehand deep, where you're going to move back diagonally like this, hit the ball, come back to the middle all the way, and then you get a short forehand where you're going to be diagonally moving forward. So you're going to be moving in a V formation up and back, okay? Good, Sarah. Come on. Rip it hard. Don't get stuck in your take back. Keep it continuous back there. Good. And again, up. And one more time. Come. Back. Good. And up. Okay, it's okay. It's I okay. was scared of the camera. Don't worry. One mistake I saw you do a couple of times, and there's a lot of recreational players do this mistake too. Let's say you get a ball that's short and wide, and you go here first, and then you go here. It's like a detour, you know? So you go straight to the ball. You go shortest distance to the ball, like this, this way. That's the, the worst thing. I correct that all the time. Go ahead. I correct that all the oh, time. Oh, this one? Yeah. Yeah, but you did I'm a. Telling, you're wrong weird. You did it correctly a lot of times, but I saw a couple of times you did a little bit of a detour. Yeah. So let's do four more, and then you focus on that short one, just cutting the angle off and moving more efficiently. Middle, short, batter, and go deep all the way to the middle, Sarah. Come, it's that Spanish discipline. Come on. Yes. All right, same thing on the back end. Deep first. Come to the middle. And short, cut the angle off. And all the way to the middle, Sarah, deep. Come on, middle, short. Good. And Sarah, all the way to the middle, I'm gonna put a cone down. Here we go, all the way to the middle, come. Come all the way to the middle, up. And last one right here. Come on, big turn, rip. I know. It's okay, it's okay, go deep. Middle, big shoulder turn, Sarah, come. Good, middle, deep. And middle, short. Love those little setup steps, good, deep. And short, come. And we go deep, come. And short, Sarah, one more. Sarah, I try to teach all my students to do what you just did there, those little adjustment steps. You, you hear those? But people don't do that. They take a long steps. They don't adjust, you know. They, they don't ever, like when you see recreational players like 3.0 level play, you don't hear any squeaking. I know. Because they don't adjust. And they don't have the intensity when they're on their toes and moving. But you know, let me tell you, when I was young, I yeah. was the worst one with footwork. Is that right? Growing up, because I was always tall. Yes. Like, you know, when you were 12, I was already this height. Yes. So I had to work extra on it. Right. That's why. You so developed it. It's definitely something you can develop. Because I was the worst one. No coordinated, no fast. And well, now, you know, it's something that I have possible. You know what else? Like, that part of tennis, the footwork part, is independent of speed. So you don't have to be fast to be able to do that. Right. It's got nothing to do with being fast. It's just right. moving the feet and setting up to adjust to the incoming ball. Those small little footwork adjustments, that's footwork. Yeah. You know? So, like, there's a lot of players, even on tour, Less and less these days, like even a lot of the tall players move really well, but maybe back in the day it was more of the taller players who didn't move so well, they weren't fast, but they still had really good footwork. Yep. For example, someone like Sharapova, you know? Yep. Wasn't that fast, but her footwork was excellent. Was really good. Yeah. Okay, Sarah, now we do the same drill, but hitting forehands from the backhand side, okay? Okay. It's the reverse backhand V, we're doing forehands from the backhand side. So forehand here and forehand there. Yeah, but you come back to the middle. All the way, no cheating, here we go. Come, deep, and come to the middle. Short, come on, attack. Middle, deep, and middle. Keep that forehand continuous, come on. Good, and we go deep, come. And again, Sarah, come, short. Good, and we go deep, come. And we go short, come, Sarah. You got two more. And go deep, all the way to the middle. And short, come on, get in there. Good. Okay, Sarah, we're gonna do the backward V. So you start standing in front of the cone right here, in front of it, 
and I'm going to push you back on the forehand. You hit it with a lot of spin. You come back around the corner and then a defensive backhand back there. Same thing, you try to put as much spin and as much height on the ball as possible, okay? Here we go. Come around the cone and backhand, come. Around the cone here and forehand, come on. Good, and again, backhand. And again, forehand, come Sarah. Good, and backhand, come. All right, Sarah, now we're going to do the forward view, okay? This is an offensive drill. You start behind the cone, you get one short forehand, you move up to it diagonally, go around the cone, and then the same on the backhand side. Here we go. Forehand, come. And go around, backhand, come. And again, a little bit more top spin. Come on, get control on the ball. Good. Backhand, come. Good. And forehand, come. Good, Sarah. Nice shot. Backhand, come. Get a little bit more distance on the back end, more space. And match point right here. Oh, you put control. You, because you missed the last match point. There you put a little bit too little power. There was a little bit of a too safe of a shot there. Yeah. But good job. Nice work. Thank Very you. good. Okay, now I'm going to remove the cone and we're going to turn the V's into X's. So we're going to combine the drills that we just did and we're going to do what's called the X drill. Okay. So hear me out. You're going to do one forehand deep, come back to the middle, one forehand short, come back to the middle, one backhand deep, come back to the middle, one backhand short, come back to the middle so that it looks like an X. Let's do a set of 12. Back to the middle all the way, up. And deep backhand. Middle, up. Sarah, now we do the X but we're gonna isolate one shot. So while these situations might not be completely realistic, this is great for spacing, learning to get out of the way and learning to get out of difficult situations. So let's do the X only forehands and then we'll do the X only backhands, okay? Okay. We start off with forehands. Here we go. 12, middle, forehand again. And now forehand, come. Middle, forehand again. Forehand, middle, forehand again, and forehand, come, middle, forehand again, no cheating, all the way in the middle, Sarah, come on, four more, middle, forehand, and forehand again, middle, forehand, come. Not the match point, Sarah. Give me a round of four more. You get punished for that. Four more. Here we go. Forehand. Middle. And deep. And middle. Come. Short. Much better. Good. Middle. The back end is going to be uncomfortable. You're going to have to work a lot to make it feel more comfortable. Come. Middle. Up. Okay, Sarah, now we're gonna do bounce feeds. Another thing that I learned from Spanish coaches, this is great because I can increase the frequency and give you a little bit of pace as well. So it's a little bit different in hand feeding and you're gonna be working on your racket head speed and your reaction time. So I'm gonna bounce feed the ball. You don't have to run, but you do have to get ready and get prepared really fast. Come on, quick. It helps to stay a little bit lower. Stay low to the ground. Go again, come on. Keep going, Sarah. Keep going, Sarah. Come. High intensity. Go again. High intensity. Come on. Come on. Keep going. Come on. Again. Keep going. Come on. Make that big shoulder turn. Again, Sarah. Come on, Sarah. And take a little break. That's hard, right? That's a leg burner. And core too, right? Hey, you no, feel it? You feeling your abs? Yeah. <laughs> 
Come on, Sarah. Come on, Sarah. This is your last drill for today. Come on, we're gonna burn you out. Come again. Again, come. Again. Come, Sarah. Come, Sarah. The last one. All right. Good work. So there's a few other bounce feed drills that I usually do with my students. One of them we did last time we did drills. Remember the high ones right. where I bounce high and we're running so back? Good. And one that I love, another thing that I learned from the Spanish coaches is rallying, like me at the net, and then every now and then I bounce one into the ground. And this will also improve your preparation and your explosiveness. So I really am a big fan of the Spanish way. And I think this was good that I had a player from Spain to demonstrate these drills. You did a great job. It's really good. Thank you How are you so feeling? Much. You tired? I'm tired. This is really like fitness. It's, it's fitness. Like not only tennis, like, you know, you get fitness out of it. But that's what I love about the hand feeding or bounce feeding is that the frequency is much higher. You can maneuver the ball in, in a way where you can't really do that if you're hitting with someone. So the intensity is super, super high. It forces you to move the feet really quickly. And again, it's no surprise to me that Spanish players have always had some of the best footwork in the world. And when you play on clay, you can't really survive on clay unless you have good footwork. So true. it kind of goes hand in hand. So true. But yeah, good job today. Nice. Thank you.